Section 3, Binary Ionic Compounds. The first formulas of compounds you will write are for binary ionic compounds. A binary compound is one that is composed of two elements. Before you can write a formula, you must have all the needed information at your fingertips. You need to know which elements are involved and what number of electrons they lose, gain, or share in order to become stable. The relationship between an element's position on the periodic table and the number of electrons it gains or loses is called the oxidation number of an element. An oxidation number tells you how many electrons an atom has gained or shared to become stable. For ionic compounds, the oxidation number is the same as the charge on the ion. For example, a sodium ion has a charge of 1 plus and an oxidation number of 1 plus. The number at the top of each column is the most common oxidation number of elements in that group. For example, in the first group, hydrogen. Beginning with hydrogen, the oxidation number for that group is 11. For the second group, 21, and so forth. The elements in this table can have more than one oxidation number. And again, I don't expect you to memorize the oxidation numbers for the particular elements we're looking at. When naming these compounds, the oxidation number is expressed in the name with a Roman numeral. For example, the oxidation number of iron and iron 3 oxide is 3 plus. When writing formulas, it's important to remember that although the individual ions in a compound carry charges, the compound itself is neutral. A formula must have the right number of positive ions and the right number of negative ions so the charges balance. What if you have a compound like calcium fluoride? Calcium ion has a charge of 2 plus and a fluoride ion has a charge of 1 minus. In this case, you need to have two fluoride ions for every calcium ion in order for the charges to cancel and the compound to be neutral with the formula calcium fluoride, CaF2. You can write formulas for ionic compounds by using the following rules in this order. Number one, write the symbol of the element or polyatomic ion, which are ions containing more than one atom that has the positive oxidation number or charge. Number two, write the symbol of the element or polyatomic ion with a negative oxidation number. Number three, the charge without the sign of one ion becomes a subscript of the other ion. Reduce the subscripts to the smallest whole numbers that retain the ratio of ions. You can name a binary ionic compound from its formula by using these rules. Number one, write the name of the positive ion. Number two, Check to see if the positive ion is capable of forming more than one oxidation number. If it is, determine the oxidation number of the ion from the formula of the compound. To continued, write the charge of the positive ion using Roman numerals and parentheses after the ion's name. If the ion has only one possible oxidation number, proceed to step three. Step three, write the root name of the negative ion. The root is the first part of the element's name. An example, oxygen is going to be expressed in a binary compound as an oxide. The same for phosphorus, be written or pronounced as phosphide. 
Number four, add the ending "-ide to the root." The table lists several elements and their "-ide counterparts." Subscripts do not become part of the name for ionic compounds. However, subscripts can be used to help determine the charges of these metals that have more than one positive charge. Not all compounds are binary. Baking soda has the formula NaHCO3. This is an example of an ionic compound that is not binary. Some compounds, including baking soda, are composed of more than two elements. They contain polyatomic ions. A polyatomic ion is a positively or negatively charged covalently bonded group of atoms. So the polyatomic ions as a whole contain two or more elements. The table lists several polyatomic ions. To name a compound that contains one of these ions, first write the name of the positive ion. Then write the name of the negative ion. To write formulas for these compounds, follow the rules for binary compounds with one addition. When more than one polyatomic ion is needed, write parentheses around the polyatomic ion before. Here's an example of naming a compo complex compound. How would a scientist write the chemical formula for ammonium phosphate? To write the formula, answer the following questions. Question number one, what is the positive ion and its charge? The positive ion is NH4, nitrogen hydroxide, and its charge 1 plus. What is the negative ion and its charge? The negative ion is PO4, 3 minus, and its charge is 3 minus, phosphate. Balance the charges to make the compound neutral. Three NH4 1 plus ions with a charge of plus 3 balances one phosphate ion, 3 minus, or the charge of one ion without the sign becomes a subscript of the other. Add parentheses for subscripts greater than 1. NH4 combined with PO4 gives NH4 3 PO4. The chemical formula for ammonium phosphate is NH4 3 PO4. Some ionic compounds have water molecules as part of their structure. These compounds are called hydrates. A hydrate is a compound that has water chemically attached to its ions and written into its chemical formula. When a solution of cobalt chloride evaporates, pink crystals that contain six water molecules for each unit of cobalt chloride are formed. The formula for this compound is COCl2. Plaster Paris also forms a hydrate when water is added. It becomes calcium sulfate dihydrate, which is also known as gypsum. And although there isn't much in our classroom, gypsum is common wallboard. When writing a formula that contains a hydrate, the number is shown after a dot. Following the number 2 is a formula for water as shown. Calcium sulfate combined with two parts water. Covalent compounds are those formed between elements that are nonmetals. Some pairs of nonmetals can form more than one compound with each other. In the system you've learned so far, each of these compounds would be called nitrogen oxide. You would not know from that name what the composition of the compound is. 
Scientists use Greek prefixes okay, class. to indicate how Welcome many atoms chapter of 20. each element are in, in a binary chapter. covalent compound. For example, if the number of atoms is one, the prefix mono is we'll used. Take a look at if the number of atoms bonds. is two, the prefix chapter is dye is divided is used into three, in the three sections. Forth. The first Notice section that the last is stability and bonding. Drop. Section when two. The second element that types of bonds as an and endoxide. section three, probably the most important for you, is writing formulas. Often the prefix and mono compounds. is omitted, although it's used for emphasis. In, in section some one, we describe what a the compound. Same Welcome to section two. Some of the matter around you is in the form of uncombined in elements. In this section, we the types of compound is named the regular way. It begins like with the other of water molecules. Of these three elements unite chemically. By the group. Adam's loser. And that concludes the lecture for section three. Question one from section three. What does the oxidation number of an element tell you? The answer? The oxidation number indicates how many electrons an atom has gained, lost, or shared in order to become stable. Question 2. A blank is a compound composed of two elements. The answer? A binary compound is composed of two elements. Potassium iodide is a binary ionic compound. Question 3. What is a hydrate? The answer, a hydrate is a compound that has water chemically attached to its ions. Water is also written into its chemical formula.